What's the opposite of a microwave? A tsunami. Get it? Because microwave, as in like small wave, and tsunami, which is like, yeah, never mind. Greetings, investigators. My name is Detective Sins, and welcome to another installment of Synopsins. Today, we're covering a Norwegian disaster movie from 2015 titled The Wave. Watch out for spoilers, and let's get into the video. The film begins with footage from January 15, 1905. A rock slide in Nordfjord occurred while the village was completely asleep. The 40-meter wave smashed into the shore, killing 63 people. By 2015, Norway had 300 unstable mountain ranges, and it's only a matter of time before a huge, unstable mountainside causes a massive rockfall and a tsunami. Christian Eikjord is a geologist who lives in the small town Geiringer. He builds a harmonious family with his wife, Aiden Eikjord, and their children, Sandre and Julia Eikjord. During dinner, Christian describes the apartment he just visited. He describes how modern the apartment is, including how the door is operated by a remote to lock and unlock it. It amuses them since they are unaware that such technology exists, which is weird as we'll find out later that Christian is a scientist. On his last day of work, Christian celebrates his departure with his co-workers Arvid, Georg, Margit, and Jacob at the early warning center. Arvid describes Christian as intelligent and hardworking, so it's no wonder that the oil industry wants to hire him. Christian starts packing up after the party. He goes to the control room after he hears a beeping sound. The groundwater suddenly sank in 4 and 5. Then we lost contact, Georg tells Christian. They examine the footage from the cameras, but everything appears to be in good working order. Here's a tip. If technology tells you something is wrong, you better go check it out. When Christian gets back home, Aiden tells him to throw his books and papers in the trash as he won't be needing them anymore. Hang on, you're a scientist and you don't even have a laptop? That's like saying, oh I'm a pianist but I only have a keyboard, not even a stand-up piano. As their neighbors Thomas, Anna and Teresa come to say goodbye, Christian looks up at the mountains, as if foreshadowing something terrible might happen. Spoiler alert, it will. Christian and his two children drive to the harbor. As they are queuing, he notices a lot of water dripping through some of the nearby rocks. When it's his turn to get on the ferry, he quickly turns the car around and drives to his office, which is the equivalent of shouting OBJECTION in your own marriage ceremony. Christian informs his colleagues that the overhanging rocks are about to fall. Christian and Jacob then go to inspect the sensors. They grab the safety line and turn on the helmet cameras so that the rest of the team can see what they see. They start tugging long strands of cable out and find out that the cables are severed. This is not a natural tear. Arvid claims that if they drill additional holes, everything will be okay. Christian grows frustrated as they are missing the point. He uses a computer simulation to show them what will happen if the mountainside collapse. However, Arvid still does not want to notify the town since he doesn't want to stir panic and ruin the tourist season. Hmm, sounds familiar? It's like those politicians that open up borders for travel without properly enforcing safety regulations when, we know what, is still spreading wider than a porn star's ass. Sin. Oh, did I forget to tell you that he left his children in the car when he went to the center? Well, he forgot about them too. Sandri leaves a note stating that they have had enough of waiting and tells him to call Aiden. With fear and guilt, Christian drives his car to where Aiden works, the Geiringer Hotel, which is located at a height of 1.7 meters above sea level. Aiden confronts Christian about his mistakes and she offers Sandri and Julia the option of staying at the hotel for the night, but Julia prefers to say her goodbyes to their home. Aiden receives messages from her husband at the hotel, apologizing for his behavior. She gives a small grin, ready to forgive. She pulls up a paper from her desk that contains evacuation protocols in the event of a tsunami wave and flips through it, marking a specific path in the hotel as she considers his anxieties. At night, the town is quiet, especially at the hotel. Sandra gets bored in his room and grabs his skateboard. 
he sees Vibeke, his mother's co-worker, and greets her. After traveling down several stairs, Sandre finds a basement entrance and skates down the hall with his headphones on. At the early warning center, Georg notices that the numbers are worsening. He wakes Margit and alerts Arvid and Jacob about the data. Is everything okay up there? Christian asks, to which Margaret responds that certain sensors indicate the crevice is contracting. Christian goes to the dumpster and looks for his books and papers that he had thrown away earlier that day. He notices a flock of birds flying away from the mountains, indicating an incoming tsunami. He hurriedly dials the base again, speaking with Arvid and telling them to get out of the crevices as soon as possible. When the contractions get more intense, Arvid and Jacob are unable to escape. Jacob's leg is crushed by a massive rock. Arvid tries to help Jacob and clips his line to him calmly. It won't hold the both of us, he says when Jacob wonders what he is doing. Margaret sounds the alarm, alerting everyone that a disaster is approaching. A rock avalanche begins and the following rocks knock Arvid off the ledge, killing him. As the rocks fall into the ocean, a tremendous wave forms. Julia wakes up and Christian quickly wraps his arms around her and sets his timer to a 10-minute countdown. Aiden realizes her husband was correct and informs Vibeke that they only have 10 minutes to go to the higher area. She then instructs her to inform the guests that they must depart immediately and to get the bus driver. Aiden instructs Christian to take Julia somewhere secure while she takes care of the guests. Aiden notices Sandri is missing and asks Vibeke, Vivica says she saw him in the corridor before. Aiden rushes back in to find Sandre. A couple that Aiden met earlier, Maria and Philip, gets off the bus to help her. Maria hears a voice from the basement and rescues Sandre. However, the wave was approaching faster than they could escape. They rush back to the basement as the water starts chasing them. Philip and Sandre are waiting for Aiden and Maria, who are running towards them. However, Maria is dragged away from the door by the water, leaving her unsavable. Christian and Julia runs to the higher area. He notices Thomas's family and tells them to run. Another man, however, notices the chaos and leaves his car, which then reverses, trapping Anna's leg. Christian looks back and sees the approaching wave. Christian directs Thomas to secure their daughters. Christian helps Anna, but she has a terrible limp. Christian is afraid they won't make it, so he forces Anna into the car. Christian and Anna clinch. Water slams through the rear glass, drowning them. They scream as a large piece of rubble slams into the glass, killing one of them. Now you may not like being crushed by rocks, but you could give this video a like and if you love it, go and subscribe to see more of our content. Anyways, back to the show. Christian regains consciousness. He discovers Anna has died with a debris lodged in her chest. Christian goes up to the hills and reunites with Julia but his wife and son are nowhere to be found. With one last desperate attempt, he told Julia that he's going to go find mom and Sandre. At the hotel, Aiden and Sandre attempt to escape from the bomb shelter they took refuge in, but water pours in. After shutting the door, she searches the area and finds a vent. She smashes the grate off and climbs up to check. The vent is really narrow and they will most likely be unable to pass through it. They hear a metallic squeak and water starts to seep in through the cracks in the door, so they try to slow it down with their coat. Philip becomes furious, insisting they should take their chances to go or die. Luckily for them, they have that choice. If I were in their position, my floofy body is gonna be a handicap. Christian rows a boat towards the city. When he arrives in the city, he shouts to see if anyone is still alive. As you'd expect, nobody replied. It's like playing Marco Polo with yourself. He continues walking till he comes upon the hotel's bus. He enters the bus only to discover that all the passengers have died. The water level in the bomb shelter is rising, forcing Aiden, Sandre, and Philip to float to breathe. Aiden makes an attempt to open the door, but to no avail. They swim over to the vent in order to keep breathing. Philip panics and drags Aiden and Sandre under the water, saying, I'm not going to die like this. Aiden, fearful for her son's life, drags Philip underwater and locks his head between her thighs, killing him. But like, dying because you got a MILF to choke you between her thighs? That's kinda top tier, not gonna lie. Anyways. Christian searches the hotel but finds no one. He finds Sandre's bag in one of the rooms. 
he sobs because he believes his wife and son are dead. Despair and frustration drives him to pound on the wall with a metal pipe. Hearing the clangs, Aiden dives into the water, grabbing a wrench and start banging on the pipes. Christian realizes that someone is still alive, he inhales deeply and swims down to the basement. He slides the stones out of the way and begins to open the door. Aiden tells Christian that she must help Sandre after opening the door, but Christian instructs her to just get out of the water and he will save Sandre. Aiden agrees, swims up and abandons the two loves of her life. Christian dives into the vent where Sandre is waiting. Sandre was paralyzed by shock and fear of what he just witnessed. Christian tries to persuade him that he is needed by everyone in the family and they must go now. They inhale deeply and begin swimming. Sandri runs out of breath. Christian realizes this and so he shares Sandri his breath. Sandri manages to make it out alive but now he is out of breath. Aiden dives back and drags Christian to the surface without hesitation. Aiden begins CPR and gets increasingly frustrated as it appears to have no effect. She comes to a halt after a few minutes, assuming her husband is dead. Sandre, on the other hand, refuses to accept it and continues to perform CPR. Christian finally spits out the water and begins to breathe normally once again. The film ends with Christian, Sandre, and Aiden heading up safely to the hill. Julia runs to them, delighted. The family gratefully approaches the group of survivors and rescue responders. You see, all this could have been avoided had they just trusted technology and listened to the guy with the biggest brain in the room. He can never be too careful, especially when millions of lives are at stake. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button down below. Subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. And ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. Sinvestigators, you are dismissed.